Cal Newman, sir, sir. Hey, buddy. So uh, base running wise, how would you evaluate your club so far this year and uh, positive, negatives, room for improvement, anything like that? Well, I think there's always room for improvement, Kyle. Uh, again, I think, you know, I think the stolen base component, uh, I think we're pretty good there. I like their aggressiveness, aggressiveness that we're showing. Giddy and the, and, the, and the guys work daily on, you know, identifying you know, pitcher catcher combinations that we can take advantage of. I think we've done a pretty good job of going first to third uh, overall. I'd have to look at the, the league numbers. I know uh, as of like two weeks ago, uh, there were some metrics that showed, uh, you know, we were, you know, a really solid base running team. If you're referring, Kyle, to the last couple nights with, uh, you know, Charlie specifically yesterday and maybe Connor Joe. Uh, you know, on McMahon's base hit the other day. Sure, uh, those were those were misreads, and you know they show up in close games. So that was, uh, you know, that's frustrating for for both those guys, and they'll be the first to admit it. But I think overall, in general, uh, you know, we I'd, I'd have to dig a little deeper into maybe some of the statistical stuff that's that's measured. But you know, to my to my critical eye, I think it's been it's been. Uh, it's been fine, but uh, to your first point, room for improvement. And specifically the, the stolen bases you like where your guys' is, you know, mentality, aggressiveness is at. I know you guys are, I think, fifth in the majors right, right now. You've only had six caught stealing. You like kind of the right. chances and the, the give and take of risk you're taking there? I think so. I, th I think offensively what we need to do is, uh, you know, have that a part of our game because our, you know, our overall uh, offensive production uh, – is, is not where, is, is not, uh, we need more. So I think that uh, that threat helps us. I think the pressure that we can put on the defense in the, in the base ceiling component and also being aggressive uh, first to third, home to second, uh, you know, that works for a team uh, if they're aggressive, if they have speed and they make the right decisions. Cause that, you know, that always keeps the defense you know, on edge. Uh, I think as a as a team, if you have a uh, a group that is aggressive, the other team knows it, right? Through scouting reports and and team speed, and I think that makes the other team uh, at times jittery. Uh, it makes them nervous uh, because speed on the bases or speed at the plate makes defenders nervous, and I think aggressiveness makes the other team nervous. Conversely, if a team doesn't do much on the bases, uh, you know, a pitcher doesn't have to, uh, you know, a pitcher doesn't have to be overly conscious of his, of his times to home plate. Uh, outfielders don't need to charge balls. Uh, you know, they can relax a little bit more on, on, on basic ground balls, knowing that if they bobble it, you know, a team's not going to advance. Uh, the catcher can maybe be a little bit more selective in, in throwing breaking balls as opposed to fastballs uh, over a course of 150, 160 pitches. So it affects a lot of things if you're aggressive on the basis. And I think for our group of our, uh, you know, position player group that we have now uh, and what we're doing offensively, I think it helps us to be as aggressive as we can. Final one for me, buddy. I know Herman is scheduled to pitch Friday in the series opener. Where, you know, he's had some ups, had some downs. Where do you like, what do you like about his kind of mental state or where is he at mentally right now and where does he need to be? Well, I, you know, again, I think, you know, if you ask Herman, he's probably uh, in general, probably frustrated with how, you know, the early part of the season has gone for him because he has high expectations based on what he's done the last couple of years. Uh, but physically he's fine. Uh, you know, mentally, uh, you know, he's probably, uh, you know, probably trying to do too much, you know, trying to carry the load a little bit, just, you know, based on his stature in the game now as a, you know, a four-year starting pitcher with, you know, who's gotten some acclaim, led the National League in strikeouts a couple of years ago. Uh, he expects more and, and maybe he's not meeting his own expectations, but, you know, for us, uh, you know, we feel good every time he takes the mound thinking that he's going to throw a good game. But overall, he's fine. I mean, he's, you know, he's confident. 
uh, he's relaxed, uh, he's poised. Uh, you know, when he when he takes the mound, he's in he's in a good spot. I mean, he's not he's not vibrating vibrating at all. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. I've got uh, Kevin Henry. Morning, buddy. I just wanted to ask a couple of updates from you on uh, Carlos Estevez and uh, Ben Bowden, if you have any. Okay. Uh, Carlos threw yesterday here in San Diego in a, in a simulated game. He threw 20 pitches. Uh, he faced Connor Joe Trejo and, and Chris Rabago. Uh, ball was coming out great. He feels, uh, he feels, you know, very good arm wise, the finger, uh, the pulley finger is healed. Uh, so he's very confident uh, about his arm and, uh, you know, obviously an upcoming activation. Uh, he's going to join uh, Kyle tomorrow in Albuquerque and pitch an inning. And then uh, an activation could be coming based on, you know, again, the, the results of how his finger feels. Uh, ben Bowden, a lot of the scans came back. And fortunately, uh, we got good news there. Uh, you know, the shoulder looks good. Uh, so, I mean, it's just a matter of time before, you know, Ben gets uh, back on the mound to, to resume throwing. I'm not sure the exact dates uh, that he will uh, get back on the mound, but it will start with playing catch, some sort of long toss. And then Keith and the medical team will uh, decide, uh, along with Ben, uh, when he jumps back on the mound. I mean, a lot will be how Ben feels. Uh, and that will start, I think, as soon as we get back on, on Friday, he'll, uh, he'll start throwing. And then, you know, uh, you know, you guys, you know, just continue to ask me uh, his status, but I'm not sure when he's going to go to the mound, but that'll be the, the first good sign that he's on his way back. Is there a comparison with his to, to what Kyle endured? Or no, uh, no compare. Uh, no, uh, you know, Kyle had a, you know, Kyle had a little uh, small strain and tear uh, in the rotator cuff. Uh, ben Ben's imaging showed, you know, pretty clean shoulder. So that's a good sign. Great. Thank you. Yes. Tracy. Buddy, particularly the last few games, the runners in scoring position, particularly with less than two outs, is that becoming more and more of a concern? Um, I mean, you, they, everybody says you can't hit on the road. You guys have hit yeah. and have base runners. You just haven't scored. Them. Well, again, I think, uh, you know, I think frustration more than a concern. I think that, uh, you know, I think late in the game last night, there were, uh, you know, signs of inexperience and, and at bats where, uh, you know, we didn't realize that, uh, you know, the pitcher was in trouble, not, not the hitter. And I think we, we took our at bats as though we were in trouble. You know, we swung at balls, we wildly swung at breaking balls in the dirt. And a lot of times that's just, you know, the, the heartbeat of the player and the, you know, the, maybe the mind racing. And, you know, the only way you get experience uh, in doing this is by doing this at this level. Uh, you know, early in the game, uh, second and third, no outs, uh, you know, you know, Daza and Diaz, uh, you know, struck out uh, against Snell, right? Uh, who had a who had his good stuff last night. I mean, I mean, he had he had the strikeout work, and and he's but he struck out. You know, I think he's averaging fourteen strikeouts per nine innings. So he's striking out other guys. He's striking out other guys in the league as well. But you know, you know, we got to be able to put the ball in play uh, for sure in those situations. Uh, you know, you got to make contact, and you know, he struck us out. So. Uh, Frustrating, uh, I guess we can say concerned because you, you know because you have to have results. You have to have results of of putting the ball in play uh, in those situations in situational hitting. And it's looked a little worse the last couple of days, or I think the last week we had some opportunities on the home stand as well uh, to add on runs to to, to get a run here or there uh, in in critical moments. There was a couple of game winning opportunities against the Reds. <clears throat> we had some younger players, uh, you know, didn't get it done. So, uh, you know, it's baseball, but, but uh, you know, it's, it's being talked about uh, again, that, you know, they're going to go through it and hopefully we, uh, you know, over time, we, our success rate, uh, you know, picks up again, because I think early in the year, our success rate league wide 
was was pretty good. I think the, if you look at those situational type at bats, uh, moving guys over uh, from second to third with less than less than <clears throat> one out, uh, men on third less than less than two. Uh, we were in the upper third of the league and uh, success rate. So it was happening then. Uh, we've been a little bit of a, uh, you know, unsuccessful lately. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's being talked about down here in the clubhouse and the cages. So hopefully we can we can bounce back and start putting the ball and play more consistently. Ray Skipper. Yep. Right, we got a Sean O'Neill who's covering for Thomas Harding today. Sean, go ahead. Uh, hi, buddy. I was wondering, I, I hear you talk about progress and learning and experience for the players. I'm wondering if on a macro level that holds true for you, because I see parallels between 08, 09 and San Diego and some of the things you're dealing with now in terms of getting young players in. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's a process, Sean. It, anyway, good to hear your voice. I think that, you know, a lot of times, that, you know, we, we expect so much from young players right away, right? They're, they're built up a lot, uh, you know, through the minor leagues, you know, a lot of prospect reports and, and all the things that, that go along with what's going on in the minors and, <clears throat> and teams' prospects. Uh, but there's a learning curve for sure. And if you, if you look at all, you know, 700 and what is it now, 100 776 players uh, in the big leagues. You know their their career path uh, on timeline is is different. I mean, obviously, you want to have a seamless transition from you know double A AA to triple A to the big leagues and have that triple A. You know that, that triple A statistical performance show up in the big leagues right away. But it, I've said all along, there's a huge difference between major league pitching and minor league pitching. You know, I think we've saw that the last two nights with the Padre starters, uh, you know, the, the Padre bullpen uh, and some of their specialty guys, whether it's Hill from uh, the left side down under Austin Adams last night with that uh, heavy slider attack, you know, Melanson's professionalism. I go down the line, but anyway, uh, you know, it's a learning curve. And uh, again, some of those 08, 09 teams, you know, with Venable and uh, Headley and Hunley and, Denorfia and, and some of these guys that were, you know, finding their way, uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard. And it takes time for a, for a guy to really settle in. And, you know, like I said last night, I think, you know, Tappy is starting to get there. Uh, McMahon uh, is starting to get there. And these guys have been with us for a couple of years now. So, uh, you know, we're doing, uh, we're doing that with some guys right now, obviously in our, on our roster. Are you doing anything differently as a manager in this situation than you? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I think you always, you, you learn from, you know, years of doing this. So uh, again, you know, probably, you know, what we're doing as a coaching staff, and this is, you know, both on the pitching and hitting side, because we have some young pitchers as well. It's that fine line of uh, if you over coach, you know, that can get in the way of, uh, you know, that can get the way of growth. Uh, you know, if you under coach, uh, you know, it doesn't happen fast enough. So you, you really got to find that balance of, uh, of what to say, how to say it and when to say it. So, uh, you know, we're going through that now. So I think I would like to think that some of our veteran coaches, whether it's, you know, Dave Maggot and Steve Foster, Daryl Scott, uh, you know, the years of experience that we have and, you know, where Mike Redmond is in, in his career, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're doing, a, we're, we're doing it how we should do it. I would, I would think, uh, and helping these guys without, uh, you know, giving them too much information and letting them learn, you know, on the job as well. And last question is Brendan Rogers ready to join the club next series. He's getting really close. Uh, you know, we're going through that process of, of discussing Brendan, uh, as we speak. So, uh, there's a, there's a good chance that he could, he could join us. I can't say definite. I know that, uh, you know, the Albuquerque team is off today. Uh, they're traveling from El Paso back to Albuquerque and we're, uh, you know, we're, con we're, we're conversing uh, with our minor league people. We're talking about it, uh, you know, amongst our group here in Denver. So, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll, we'll have a decision for you, obviously in, you know, 24, 48 hours on that. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for buddy? 
All right, buddy. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks. Everyone, we will talk to you post game.